screeching through the clouds at Mach Plus, these F-105 Thunder Chiefs are bent on destroying the enemy's ground potential. Tactical air power, in the role of interdiction, denies the enemy the freedom to move and resupply his forces. In World War II and later in Korea, we learn the meaning and the value of interdiction, of keeping our tactical long-range air power flying at all times, smashing the enemy behind the lines, keeping him off balance, destroying his transportation systems, his marshalling yards, his ammo dumps, striking his supply areas, blowing his bridges and river crossings. relentlessly denying him the chance to get on his feet and fight back. The flexibility of tactical air power keeps the enemy off balance through interdiction attacks while still performing its other essential jobs of air superiority, close support, reconnaissance, airlift, whenever and wherever needed. We have a whole arsenal of tactical weapons to do all these jobs. The self-guided sidewinder missile, using heat from the enemy's afterburners as its homing beam. Bombs to clean out the other fellow's backyard and be sure that it stays that way for a long, long time. Rockets to be used in interdiction and as air-to-ground support for troops. Napalm bombs to destroy his air bases, discourage and flush out his mobile army, infantry, and logistic equipment. Modern weapons in the hands of skilled airmen. The result, effective tactical air power. Howling across sky and water, fighter aircraft, the strength and punch of tactical air power, provide close air support to ground forces, giving new life to the pinned down soldier. The problem of infighting on the ground with an unseen enemy, trying to move ahead in all kinds of weather, calls for help from the skies. The response is quick. Aircraft and men come to the defense within minutes. With coordinates carefully indicated by the Air Force forward air controllers working with ground forces, tactical air power takes over to clear the area and make way for ground troops to push ahead. And this is close air support. It's close right above the infantryman's or tanker's head. It's support, tremendous aerial firepower against hostile targets in the ground soldiers' battle. And it's unified. Firepower from the ground, firepower from the air, teamed up to win the battle. Air Force forward controllers keep the fighters on the job until satisfied that the road is clear for tanks and troops. After the last blast, the ground troops move on to the next job, covered from above by tactical air power. Flash bombs reveal enemy movements and positions for tactical air power through its photo reconnaissance aircraft. RB-66 and this RF-101. The eyes of combat commander, they pinpoint ground operations with incredible clarity. Especially designed equipment provides the most precise type of photography at supersonic speeds. They may have as many as five or seven cameras working at one time, some forward, some to the side, and others straight down. To an intelligence officer, photo reconnaissance is about the only practical way that he can dig up vitally needed battle information. 
In Cuba, Air Force reconnaissance planes played a major part in spotting those offensive missile bases. Now we know what photo reconnaissance means to us personally. Back on the ground, the negatives are rushed to the processing rooms and placed in automatic developing machines. Prints are made, and in the course of minutes, the pictures appear. Analyzed by the photo interpreters, the information obtained will either be filed for future reference or may call for immediate action. Photo reconnaissance, an important part of tactical air power. You call, we haul. This is what happens when tactical air power is called upon to provide battlefield airlift. No longer true is the old theory that a field commander surrounded by the enemy and cut off from reinforcements and supplies is doomed. The men and tools of war can now be delivered, airlift, whether it be C-119, C-130, C-123. As we watch these men jump, remember the drop and supply carrier concept is not new. It was used by the Russians in 1930 in their war maneuvers, and by Hitler and the Allies in World War II. The first campaign in which paradrop played a major role for the U.S. was over Sicily in 1943. By 1945, airlift extensively contributed to victory in Europe and the Far East. Material of all descriptions is dropped. Vehicles, weapons, and tanks, as in this demonstration. Today, modern combat transports like the C-130 are faster than most World War II fighters. In the business of assault landing of personnel and equipment, the C-123 is particularly designed to operate from short, unprepared landing strips disembark troops and supplies, and evacuate wounded. It is but one of the many transport carriers that make up tactical air power's inventory of airlift aircraft. 